all right hello everyone and peace of christ all of you happy sunday and happy sunday with the christ before we start talking about sunday uh, we have somebody is whining in the text uh, his name is mr what let me see mr mr tor mary uh, uh, Mr. Tomari is asking, uh, the Muslim they made a video says this quotation does not exist in my book and we got them busted and we made the video about it. But the, still this guy is complaining. He said, why you are quoting Fathul Bari from different book? I mean, this is very stupid of you to say. You have, you know, you, I like it when a Muslim he played dumb. When I quote a book, and the book is quoting a book that's been I quoted two books proving my point secondly who are you to tell me what I took to quote from are you stupid or what both of them they are Muslim scholars and both of them they are explaining the ability the sexual ability of your prophet so you are very fool to say why you are quoting from there and look what happened the foolish Abdul because they hate me very much so they start reading this and they said, okay, we go to page number 282. We don't find this quotation. Because they are dummy and stupid. If they go a little bit in the line, they will see I'm quoting different name, different book. Here, here we go. This is the name of the book in the front of you. This is what happened to you when you are a stupid following a stupid. I mean, how in the world those people, they quote it, they read my quotation, but they could not read the name of the book. And then they made a challenge, I challenged CP and his followers to show me this quotation. <laughs> and me personally, I will apologize if he can show it. And then we show it. Did he apologize? No. For he's a fraud like he's a prophet. So, you know, if you want to play games, I mean, stupid. The, the question is, did they say that about their prophet? Yes. Is it exist? It's in the front of you. And here we go. This is my reference from all the books you want. <clears throat> the book of Sharh uh, uh, al-Jami' uh, al-Saghir. This is the exact quotation as it is. Copy, paste. Copy, paste for all donkeys who have little brain. Word by word. This is your Muslim books. And this is the book which I'm quoting the name and the page number. Garbage in, garbage out. وَقَالَ الْحَافِظْ إِبْنُ حَجَرْ فِي فَتْحِ الْبَارِ قَالُوا كُلَّ مَنَ اتَّقَى اللَّهُ اللَّهُ كَانَ أَشَدَّ شَهْوَةً See the quotation? If you go down in the page, you will find the book of Fath al-Bari. Volume number one, page number 379. And by the way, this is mentioned in more than one place in the books of Fath al-Bari. But because they are idiots and they hate me very much. So they said, oh, okay. Uh, look like he, uh, he he is quoting something is not exist. So look what happened now. We have them exist in two books, not in one. Now, if we want to find uh, Fath al-Bari, here we go. Let me find Fath al-Bari in a second. Here we go. This is Fath al-Bari for all the donkeys who have little brain. This is your book, value number one. Sorry, value number uh, 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 seven. They went in the in the you know in the print, and this is page three eighty three in this book in this print. And this is the hadith as it is. So that guy was quoting Fath al-Bari and Fath al-Bari was saying that the prophet he used to do boom boom to his wives. Here is giving more details from the other book. And he they were 11 women as we explain in the book of Ghusl which means book of washing. I'm, I'm just reading what is written there. And not only that and this is what the, the other scholar he quote he said what you call إِنَّ كُلَّ مَنْ كَانَتْ تَقَى or أَتْقَى اللَّهُ فَشَهْوَتَهُ أَشَدْ And it's been said that everyone who is more like he fear Allah or he obey Allah 
his sexual desire will be way more than the one and he continue says because the one who don't fear Allah he just can watch he cannot do it you see it so you know when you are a fool and you're trying to find something against me look what you did you expose your cult you showed everybody how you Muslims are proud about the private part of your prophet and the quotation is there the page number is there from both books so what you prove by by this to us you prove that you are a scam and you are a fraud and you are willing to say anything just to prove me wrong anything so is the information absolutely true is absolutely true and here we go the reference in the front of you I don't care if you believe me or not who cares if you believe me or not the question is why you are being stupid can you explain to me why you quote it from there I quote from any book I want are you stupid or what this is what books are made for so you so you can learn from them and you quote from them are you six years old <laughs> I mean, don't get married man I mean people are really silly yes are you stupid or what you ask me why you quoted from there I mean this is my book I quote from whatever I want the question is is the quotation correct absolutely correct here we go the page number the, the quotation is exactly copy paste and it's in Arabic in the front of you from both books and then you ask me why you cop why you are quoting from there don't if you don't like my book don't read it I quote from whatever I want the question is are they those Islamic books and they are accepted by Muslim the question yes they are the answer so you whining and you complain as if I'm your waiter and making food for you why you break it from that dish I like it from the other dish I'm not here to serve you my friend you don't like my book you know just take a hike the question is why they are lying saying that they cannot find my quotation anywhere hmm? and the answer is very simple Christian Prince he humiliated their prophet and they are willing to do anything to defend their cult anything it doesn't matter what it is and not only that they claim that such a quotation is not even exist not even what not even exist and here we go it's in the front of you it is in the front of you they have no shame they are stupid anyway we go back to our topic and happy Sunday everybody and here you know before before we continue ask yourself I mean what kind of a religion says that if you fear Allah Allah will increase the power of your private part I mean this is a very sexual religion and what kind of religion believe and they are proud that their prophet he can have sex with 11 women or 13 women in one night without washing how you can be proud about such a I mean let us say for the sake of argument here this is true first of all how they knew that Muhammad is having sex with all his wives unless this guy he go out and he say hey guys did you know what I did tonight I did boom 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 to all my wives I mean what a what a kind what kind of a person he is what kind of a person he is you go around and you tell your friends what you did with your wives and you start bragging about the power of your penis and this is supposedly that make you a god a prophet a wise man a decent man in fact the reference proof that Muhammad he have no sexual energy and he he don't have sex that's why he cannot have kids but because you Muhammad he feel that he have a problem this is why there's a there's a chapter in the Quran about the penis of Muhammad where a man he accused him that his penis is not functioning <laughs> anyway <laughs> and you know those those kids ask yourself a question if they are really uh, if they are sure from what they are saying why they don't dare to call me I mean what you will lose why does kid Fufi if he is a man I mean what he will lose his virginity 
It's a Skype call. He said he will hang up on me. I made a promise that the one who hang up first is the loser. A promise. The one who will hang up first in the other, it's mean he is the one who lost. The one who mute the other one is the one who lost, which means I will never mute you. I will never hang up on you. Still the coward, he will never do it. And that is saying the rest of the story. They are afraid to death. They are intimidated. All right. Anyway, but you know, like uh, I noticed that the sales of my book, Six and Allah, increased really very much by the help of the Muslims. I'm very grateful for them. I mean, if, he, if those guys, they do those things and that will increase the sales of my books, that's wonderful. You know, I mean, there is a there is a big difference between the sales of my book, Six and Allah, 10 days ago and now. Even the rating is increasing very fast. So they help me and people, they should check it out. It's true. I mean, the, the reference is there. He's not lying. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> uh, forget about them. And, you know, we made a video for those who like to watch it, explaining those things. And it's a very, very, uh, you know, like a drama stuff. Let us go back to our weekend we are happy Christians they are sad people we are people who follow Christ the living God and they are following a person they are proud about his penis the penis prophet what is good about Muhammad his penis anything else well, his wisdom <laughs> you know a person who have wisdom oh hold on you know even when we talk about wisdom you see I don't want to go there but imagine what Muhammad said to the Muslims about his wisdom. Muhammad, he claimed that there is two angels, they came to him and they cut his chest all the way down to his testicles and they enforce a dish of wisdom and a dish of faith in his belly. I mean, the story alone is proven to us that Muhammad is a stupid fool. Who in the world want to believe that there is angels, their job is to enforce wisdom and in, in, install this stuffed, this stuffed Muhammad inside like he's a teddy bear. You know teddy bear? They stuff him. They stuff him. This is I'm I'm just quoting what what the what the Muslim they say. Do you want to show you the hadith? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I mean, if this is a prophet, who is the donkey? If this is a prophet, what what the word donkey mean? If this is Muhammad saying the story after they did the surgery for him, which means after they put the wisdom, the story alone is proof that Muhammad is a fraud. And this is after the surgery. So how fool was Muhammad before the surgery? Let me show you the hadith. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> what a drama <laughs> man I mean, it's really crazy <clears throat> really crazy cult uh, <clears throat> let us see the hadith See, guys, you forced me to change my topic now. It's okay, we will go back. <clears throat> Here we go. This is the hadith, and now they will say, we challenge you to find us the hadith. It's not exist. It's not the true. And then another fool will say to me, why well, you are quoting from there? You should not quote from there. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, which is very authentic. Muhammad train how three men or three angels they came to him and one of them is Jibreel and again look here it says Fathul Bari did you see the word Fathul, Fathul Bari page number 258 and they will say to me why you are quoting Fathul Bari <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway so look they took him uh, and they opened his chest 
and they wash his chest with the water from Zamzam. Jibreel, brother, he took a charge on him, Dr. Jibreel. Dr. who? Dr. Jibreel. Jibreel cut open part his body, brother. And the Muslim, they make fun of my, uh, my, my accent. They don't make fun of the stupidity of their, they make fun of my accent. Between his throat to the middle of the chest. By the way, it doesn't say that. It says down all the way. You know, it depends in the story. All down the way to his balls. And then they, 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 they took off, you know, his heart and the material there. Material. <laughs> what is the material? The battery? The tube? Of his chest, and hey, Muslims, look, 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 look how a Christian he reads, read this word, abundant, brother, and tether, abundant. They took it off, and then washed it with zamzam water. And then, to make the story shorter, because it's funny and stupid, they cleanse his inside his body, and then a golden tray containing a golden bowl full of belief and wisdom <laughs> okay look what if a christian book he, a christian prince he made a book saying that uh, three angels come to me and they cut my chest and they took my heart my stomach everything inside and they wash it with water coming from the wa water of uh, uh, not zam zam uh, tom tom hmm? and then a, 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 a dish made of gold couldn't there's a dish tray and look there's the, the dish will not become by itself there's a tray I mean his majesty Muhammad so a golden tray containing a golden bowl full of belief and wisdom okay hold on have you ever heard any cult in the world teach that belief and wisdom they come in dishes so the Muslims, they are upset from my quotation and we get them busted, but they are not upset from the stupidity of their prophet who is saying that they brought for him a dish of wisdom, a dish of belief. Hey, by the way, if you want to order dishes of beliefs, you can just contact me, okay? We will ship it for you right away. If you want wisdom, if you are a fool, if you are a Muhammadan and you are a fool, we, we I have connection. I can call Allah right now. He will send you a dish of wisdom. Christian Prince, Christian Prince, I told you to call me. And I'm with you do not know. Why you are busy, Dr. Zakanai? What are you doing? I that I'm that I order a dish of wisdom because I'm preparing for debating you. You order a dish of wisdom, okay? And did you receive it? It is in the delivery. And I'm going to receive it very soon. And then I'm going to train you. And I'm going to get you busted. So you think after eating the dish of wisdom, you will get me busted? Exactly. And the dish of wisdom is a meeting. Uh, uh, Zachar, hold on. How much you paid for the dish of wisdom? Zachar, how much you paid for the dish of wisdom? Zachar, come on, answer. How much you paid for it? Christian Prince, I'm not going to give you. Uh, Zachar, okay, I can get you a dish of wisdom for $19.99. Do you hear me? Christian Prince look like I'm getting screwed because I bought it for $2,000. Are you sure for $19.99? Exactly. I can get it for you from Subway. You eat it, you will be very wise. You paid $2,000, Zach and I. Why you don't call me, you idiot? $19.99. Not only that, it comes with salt and a flavor and come even with hot paper and all i mean it's delicious are you there zakir i think my wife is going to divorce me now because i spent two thousand dollars for something for twenty dollars uh, zakir next don't worry what happened in vegas stay in vegas i'm not going to tell anyone this is only between me and you and the prophet he said you can light your wife correct exactly and that means you can lie to her. Don't tell her that you spent $2,000. Tell her I spent twenty. Exactly. Thank you, Christian Prince. Actually, you are my helper. 
I used to hate you, and now you take my merit. Okay, so Zachary Nick, I want you to eat the dish, and after that, you call me, okay? Are you there? Uh, he hang up. He's so happy. I saved his marriage. So the Muslims have a problem with the Christian prince. And they are saying Christian prince, uh, uh, quotation is a lie when it's true. And we show that the reference and we get them busted. But their prophet claiming that he got a dish contained a, a, a faith and wisdom. How you can put faith in a, in a dish? I want to know how in the world uh, uh, there is a fish of uh, fish, a dish of faith, a dish of wisdom. I mean, if we can't get that, there's no fool left in the world. And then, brother, brother, a dish of uh, of uh, contain a, a tray of gold containing a gold bowl full of belief and wisdom was brought and then Jibreel he stuffed his chest with it okay hold on hold on hold on I'm trying to explain to the to the to the audience what's happened exactly all right have patience with me please you see why they are upset for me because I humiliate their stupid prophet not only I explain how stupid he is, I get him humiliated with his stupidity. And that's what makes them go crazy against me. <clears throat> Let us see. A brother. This is what happened exactly to Prophet Muhammad. Brother, Jibreel, he stuffed him. Let me introduce for you His Majesty, the most wise man in earth and in heaven, who Allah, he did a plastic surgery for him, and he stuffed him not with a fluffy cotton, no. He stuffed him with dish of faith and wisdom, which means, brother, inside the Prophet of Allah, if we open his chest as we speak, you will not find cotton, no. Even though he looked like Teddy Bear, you will find wisdom here and faith here. I mean, look, she, look at it. It's so clear. Isn't it obvious that he have a lot of wisdom here? And a lot of faith here? This is why he have the word that says help here. And here his name changed, became Ted, the teddy bear. Who in the world want to believe such a crazy man? How stupid. So the Muslims have a problem with the Christian prince. Look at Christian prince. And they cannot find the quotation because they are a bunch of illiterate like their prophet. And then we find the quotation for them and we get them busted. Still, they are not satisfied. Why? Because you are lying. You are a liar. The story of their prophet having received a dish of faith and dish of wisdom is not a lie. Absolutely. I mean, and look, their God Allah He's God. He can say be and is going to be, but he cannot make Muhammad smart. Muhammad was so stupid to the point he needed a plastic surgery. See, the first one who practiced practice plastic surgery is not uh, those singers or artists or prostitutes who want to have a uh, big breast. Actually, there's a verse in the Quran that says that Allah, he expand the breast of the Prophet. Yes, brother. He did. So, I mean, do we have a comment? What the Muslim, they will say, no, CB, it doesn't say that, CB. This is not a dish, CB. This is what? Ice cream? It says, read it. They cleanse inside his body 
and they wash the material inside with the water of Zamzam, which is arsenic and poison, according to scientific studies. And the brother Jibril, he stuffed. Look, look at the word stuffed. I mean, do you see the word stuffed? So Jibril, he put his foot in the mouth of Muhammad, like push hard, push hard. He's stuffing because not, not only he is putting wisdom there, he have to stuff him. No, ZP. It doesn't say stuff name ZP. He pushes there, ZP. <laughs> I mean, even the sound is fine. The, sound, the, the, the way they do it, it's kind of fishy. I mean, what kind of a man he speaks such a way? He, in his chest, and not only his chest, a throat blood vessels. Look at the technology, man. I mean, who can do this surgery? Pushing wisdom and faith inside the vessels of your blood and your vein, brother. So now if you take Muhammad to the hospital because of uh, 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 Quran virus, the Quran virus, yeah, it's not Corona, it's called Quran virus, because obviously to believe in such a stupid story, you have to be infected with Quran virus, which is Corona. Hmm? Right, <sighs> but anyway, the, uh, if, if a Christian prince said something, he's lying. If the Prophet Muhammad said that, Prophet Muhammad is prophet. If you look, this is this is all coming from a prophet. For sure, he's a prophet. I mean, who can who can deny such a thing? I mean, the story, even even we have pictures of it. Look, Muhammad he took selfie. This is this is real time. So, you know, a picture. This is what happened exactly while the prophet doing the surgery for him this is the stomach of muhammad this is the abundant and this is his balls in the water of zamzam and now the chest and the belly of muhammad is empty and the guy is alive i mean you take everything from inside and the guy is alive i mean do you see do you see how amazing the surgery is he took his heart out he took his testicles out <laughs> And Muhammad is watching what is happening. <laughs> no CP. <laughs> and uh, and then brother, brother, those are Christian brother, when they say things about the Prophet, the brother, don't believe them. They are lying, brother. They are lying, brother. And we get them busted, brother. Okay, you did? Are you sure? Yes, brother. And look here, Aisha in the back in the back of the picture, the one who drew this image is really an artist. Look at this. Aisha is topless. <laughs> and look here, brother. Jibreel is stuffing the chest of the prophet with wisdom. This is a moment to remember. Every believer should remember this moment, brother. How in the world we can forget or forget such a moment? A momentum moment. And the prophet, look at him, he is so happy. They are inserting a, a lot of wisdom. Man, look at the liquid coming. Look like wisdom is liquid. I thought it's like rice. I was eating rice, you see? Like, I mean, you see how naive we are, man. I was eating rice thinking that this is wisdom. It turned, no, it's not a rice. It's a, it's a liquid. It's like a juice. Makes sense. So we are lying. Muhammad is not. And this is Muhammad telling this story after the surgery. So how fool this man is after the surgery to tell such a story. Because the story alone is proven to us that this guy not only a fool, he is mentally ill. And how fool are you to believe in such a story? And kind of Muslim, they say, this is weak hadith, CP. This is not exist, CP. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, brother. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. <laughs> and then the journey, brother, started to go to the heaven. Read the journey and die laughing. 
And this is the reference because they will say, we could not find your quotation, Christian Prince. <clears throat> Are we done? Let us go back to our Sunday. <laughs> I love you all. I know that, you know, I understand that, you know, I make Muslims angry because, you know, uh, the way I, I present things is really not easy. Uh, but, you know, we are saying the truth. Uh, this is... Uh, this is Amir from Germany. <clears throat> Let us see. Any Mohammedan? Let's see what uh, what Amir he want. <coughs> Okay, it is uh, uh, Amir. He wanna call. Okay. <clears throat> hey, brother. Hey, Amir. How are you, my friend? We are live on air, and everybody can hear you. I have a question. Um, here in your book, I have the English version of uh, Allah's deception, or deception of Allah. Yes. In your book, uh, it's titled "Muhammad Loves Money," yeah. and it is re re uh, you give the reference of Sahih Al Bukhari, Book Forty Six, mm. Hadith Seven Seven One. Right. It is reported by Jabir Ibn Abdullah. There was a man who promised his slave that the slave be freed after his the master's death. After the slave's masters die, the, died, the prophet called the slave and sold him. <laughs> the yeah. slave died in the same year he was sold. Yeah. And some Muslims say, no, CP, uh, make things up. It's not <laughs> mentioned. <that> <laughs> <laughs> you know, Amir, this is, this is what we were, this is what we just were talking about. Anything we say, they say he is making things up. I mean, anything, it doesn't matter. Yeah, every, every time you think, Show them the same. Uh, CP is making things up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? I will. I, I will make a special. I will make a special video. Amir, I will make a special video about this later, but, but not today because right now I'm live on air and we are like uh, we are just enjoying our Sunday. I will make it and send it to you so you can play it for them and let, let them get get busted. Yeah. Okay. But but, but brother, he says there is no uh, in this hadith that the master died. You know. It is CP edit this sentence. No problem. You know, we will see if this is true or not. I mean, they can say whatever they want. You know, they are welcome to, to say as they wish. But, uh, you know, uh, we can. We it always approve. It's not true, CP. Yeah, it's not a true, CP. It's not true, CP. <laughs> it doesn't say that, CP. By the way, uh, by the way uh, uh, if you are from Germany. Uh, uh, I'm dying. I'm I know. If you are from Germany, don't forget to subscribe to Amir. He have a big. Uh, how, how many how many subscribers you have right now on YouTube? Uh, Sixty six thousand. Okay, in uh, in in Facebook. In Facebook, I have ten thousand. Okay, all right, yeah. So if in you YouTube sixty six and Facebook ten thousand. Yeah, if you are in uh, from Germany, subscribe to Amir. Amir is an ex Muslim. He was a Muslim. He's from uh, Iran Amen. originally, and he and his uh, his family, his brother. Uh, they, they they preach the gospel and they work hard especially I met his brother he's a wonderful person too and uh, they go on the street in Germany and they give a brochure and teach the gospel with many good Christians there and I met them in person I visited uh, I visited Amir in his house you know in his place you know I hope yeah, perfectly. I, I hope soon we will be able to do it again yeah, I wish it, brother. Yeah. Well, I, maybe this coming uh, uh, summer, maybe if I can go to Europe, I will be, I will be happy to visit you. Yeah, 
perfect. You're uh, you're welcome, brother. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. Okay, brother. Yes. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> uh, you see, it doesn't matter what you say. He's lying because they go in denial because the truth is it, it hurt. The truth hurt, my friend. So the only way is to say uh, he's lying. The Christian prince is lying. If we ask them, did Muhammad lie when he said about the plastic surgery? No, for sure not. <laughs> what kind of God he do plastic surgery? <laughs> Even the Quran, I mean the yellow pages of Muhammad, said that Allah he expanded the chest and the breast of the Prophet. No, ZP. It doesn't say that. <laughs> A lot of pain. <coughs> Look at this funny verse. What the heck is that, man? Haven't we, have we not? Open your breast. What? Open what? Open his breast. And we remove the burden. Here we go. The story is in the Hadith, and the story is in the Quran. Allah opened the breast of the Prophet Muhammad. And he removed from the breast of the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, this is what happened. First, you have to take, uh, because we have to follow the manual. First, we, we remove the nipples of Muhammad. Okay, we open the nipples. Give me the drill. Bzzz, the nipples is out. Second, we have to cut between the nipples you measure two inches exactly and you make a cut there Zzz, okay now we have to use a special material it's called a screw re uh, uh, re removal a brother prophet he has screws inside him yes he's been screwed by christian prince many times before god we have to remove all the screws i mean how in the world those people believe in this garbage no zb it doesn't say that, CP. And look, the burden of Muhammad is breaking his back. Why? What he's carrying, man? What? What? The, the burden is carrying is, is breaking his back. Oh boy. <clears throat> anyway, <sighs> how many how many time I have to say this is go back to our happy Sunday? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I know, I know. You guys, you enjoy it more when I talk about the cult of Islam because it's funny and stupid and etc. But you know, today is Sunday. A glory to the Lord. We are happy people. And later, by the way, we are going to go live on air, like late at night in my time here. Will be morning, morning for those who they are in Asia or etc. And we will talk about the hijab, the curtain, because the Muslim they have to promote the, their cult and their you know like uh, oppressing op 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 the, the oppress they use to women. Uh, the oppression uh, they promote hijab and they make it as something good so we are going to get that busted too so later we will go live you know and the topic will be christian women do not need the curtain of shame because this is nothing but a curtain of shame you know when you cover somebody with a curtain it's mean there's a shame you want to cover as simple as that why we wear certain clothes to cover certain areas because it's a shame to expose them you don't go walk with your private part in the street it's a shame so when the muhammadan they cover the women with the curtain because they believe that all of the women is a shame and this is absolutely disgusting so we will get that busted join us later we will this this will be our topic now you know a few a few days ago we made the a video about what to do what not to do in Sunday and the first advice I gave people is don't do laundry in Sunday I don't know how many of you thought about it but because this is what really families they do Sunday they do laundry I mean <clears throat> it shouldn't be this way you know I mean you can do laundry any day you want the, you have the whole week is busy add the laundry to the busy schedule will not do break it 
Leave the Sunday to be your day. Go to the church, meet your friends, have a good time, go out somewhere with your family. You know, don't make it a day which is a routine day. Even the husband, you know, like he is, he did not, you know, you and your husband, you did not spend good time together through the week. You come back home, you are tired, he is tired, you sleep. What about you make this day a special day? Friday and Saturday. You know, I said it clearly that those days are uh, luxury. It's a gift from God. And not all of us, we have them. There's poor people, they cannot have this luxury. You know what I mean? When we talk about having Saturday, think about it. Do really all people have a weekend? No. There's people, they cannot afford to go for a weekend. There's, there's people, they never heard what people, they don't know what weekend mean. Imagine I say to this person, what do you do for a weekend? What do you do for a weekend? I mean, this would be the biggest insult ever to say to such a person. What do you do in the weekend? So what, what I'm trying to say that we are blessed if you have if you have a weekend, that's mean you have a life of luxury. That's mean the Lord He blessed you and you are really in the comfort zone because still you can have a weekend. There's people they have nothing. You know, we need to learn how to appreciate. And appreciation can lead us to special joy and a special way to get the benefit of what we appreciate. I mean, look at this man. What is his what what is his fault? His fault, it says here, he is born in India. He's born in a very poor area. That's his fault. That's all. He did not commit a crime. He's not a bad person. He is born in a very poor society. Look at his face. It's very important that we look from time to time and examine what we have. You know, some people, they say to you, if you want to be happy, don't compare. Actually, I say the opposite. Compare. You should compare. Because there's two kinds of compare. There's negative and there's positive. The positive is, I compare to see how lucky I am. To appreciate what I have. So, in this Sunday and every Sunday, we should pray to the Lord that whatever He gave us, it's amazing. For if you think what you have is little, there's people that dream to have what you have. There's people that dream to have what you have. If you have legs, you can walk on them. Trust me, there's people that did not walk in their legs for many, many years. Maybe they are born without the ability to walk. If you have eyes to see, there's people, they, born, they are born blind. Appreciation is happiness. Otherwise, nothing will make you happy. It doesn't matter how rich you can be because you never have appreciation. You want more. Appreciation will lead you into being satisfied, happy, comfort. And that is God, my friend. Appreciation and you feel to others. You feel for them. Not only be selfish. Okay, I'm lucky and I don't care. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time uh,
Yeah, good for you, Jane. You know, every day, by the way, can be Sabbath and can be Sunday. You know, <clears throat> people, they have wrong understanding of the word Sabbath as an example. They think that Sabbath is Saturday. No, Sabbath is any day you designate to the Lord. And when you designate that day to the Lord, you are designated to yourself because this is your comfort zone. It's not the Lord who really he received the comfort, it's you. That's why the Messiah, he said, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. So remember that always, that Sabbath is made for you. You are not made for the Sabbath. Everything around us, God, he created for us. And when, when he advised us that Sabbath is a good thing to practice because you need it, not him, he needed it. Be happy with your family, appreciate what you have. In the same time, it's good that every, every weekend, uh, you know, we examine what we did in the past week. How many people we hurt? Starting from our family, our friends. How many people I helped? How good I was, how bad I was. Don't just live and let go. You know, some, some people, they say, let go. It's a good thing. Well, let, let go, uh, it, it can cause a disaster. Because we need to fix before we let go. Maybe we did something bad. Let go, and it's bad, still bad. So life can be beautiful if you learn the art of living. And the art of living is to be happy as a Christ he wants you to be. You see, the first happiness brought to us as a Christians that we've been taught that we are the children of God. We are what? Children of God. I mean, how amazing that statement is. Child of God. Not a slave. You know, you, okay, you are a slave of God. I mean, if he want to force you to be a slave, he will come force you. No. He wanted you to be a child of God because that is happiness. I am the present of the king of kings and I am his child, not his slave. My God do not need slaves. And that is the different, the key difference between what we believe in and the Satan they worship, the black stone Corona God. This is why we Christians when somebody have a disaster, we pray for them, we feel for them. This is why those who follow Quran or Quran, they pray for the death and they enjoy and they rejoice the death of others. Just two days ago, we showed you how they are making videos praising Allah for revenge of Allah from the Chinese. And they are claiming that Allah is the one who sent Corona. And by the way, Corona first time was discovered, it was in Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> hate my friend hate hate is a problem hate is a problem uh, don't post pa patreon in the chat please don't post it here um If you can delete it, uh, Phil. It's very important that we as a Christians, we live as a Christians and enjoy life as a Christians. Otherwise, we'll be just the creatures who eat and drink and do whatever creatures do. Right? We will not talk anymore about Islam and Quran. Because we did just we, we we did enough injury to Muhammad, which no surgery can fix it. At least you know for today. <clears throat> uh, I'm grateful for having all of you. I'm grateful for people who support what we do. Uh, but the best support you can do is you supporting yourself. You know whatever you learn which you think it's good, share with your friends, your family, so they will not be deceived. Deception is the biggest problem we have in this earth. 
and ignorance and always ignorance lead into deception that's why the Bible says read the books the Lord he encouraged us to search the books and he said to us my people being destroyed because of their ignorance you see why people are dying because of a little tiny virus because of ignorance they do not know how to fight it this is exactly what happened in the 15th 16th 17th centuries millions of people die because of a flu why because we are ignorant ignorance my friend ignorance bring death and death there's two kinds of death there's death which is death for you now and there's death forever which means going to hell we have a duty to fight the ignorance it's ignorance to believe that women are stupid and men are smart because there's many women are way smarter than men it's ignorant to say to think that you are wise and everybody else is fool because this is how the fool he think that he is wise is ignorant to think that you are the one who is in charge and you can judge everybody but nobody can judge you the Lord he says you shall know them from their fruits so we are allowed to judge the fruits not the people how we judge if Muhammad is a prophet or not I'm, I don't know Muhammad I never met him I never saw him the fruit is ugly so wisdom is not a food as Muhammad he claimed somebody will stuff it in your chest it is something you establish by educating yourself learning using the gift of God which is your brain there's there's many elements have to work together you have a brain and your brain is really capable of a lot of things and there is knowledge you have to learn and earn how you can do that you have to read study search and then you have to be wise to filter the knowledge because some knowledge is evil some knowledge is knowledge of destruction so you have to be supported by the Holy Lord you have to be with him so you will not be left alone and depend in your wisdom because your wisdom is nothing but foolishness if you are just depending on yourself all those things they lead you to be a wise person a wise woman a wise man a wise man is the one who built his house on a stone not on the sand That sentence alone can teach you a lot. This is not about a physical stone. The real stone is a confidence, faith, knowledge, and intelligence. All will lead you to believe in the true God, and then nothing can destroy you. Even if they kill you as a human being, they can kill you as a human being, but they cannot destroy you. The Lord, he said clearly that they can kill your body. And what is the benefit if somebody win the whole world and he lost his soul? So don't partner with the devil thinking you are winning. In fact, you are losing everything. So Sunday, my friend, is a blessed day. The same as Saturday the same every day every day is the day of the Lord every day is the day of the Lord and that will make your week is the best week uh, I did not like you know I just decided to go live on air because I said to myself, well, there's many people, they are maybe waiting now and they will wait for 10 hours to go again live on air. So I just wanted to share like a few words with you. And look, the few words became like an hour or something. I'm worried about your security. My friend, don't, for, don't worry about my security. Uh, you know, <clears throat> me, me myself, I uh, like I don't show my face, not because I'm worried about my security, but because I'm a very private person. Number two. The Lord, he said, you give with the right hand, you don't tell the left hand. So now, you know, people say, thank you, Christian Prince. Who's a Christian Prince? There's, there's no such a person. Nobody know who I am. 
This is a blessing for me. I receive no glory. I receive nothing from people who, you know, like wanna even if wanna even if somebody wanna say thank you, he is not even he don't know me. This is a this is a real blessing for me. I'm not looking for uh, me being famous and etc. It's a nickname. Even my books have a nickname. So one day Christian Prince he will die. None of you will know who is this Christian Prince. Oh, what you know his his nickname is a Christian Prince. And that's for me is really good. Uh, <clears throat> and don't worry about my security. I mean, what they can do. I already did the most uh, most damage ever they can. Nobody can take back the damage I did to this cult exposing it. That's it. It's there. I have my books. I have my videos. And actually, if they do something wrong to me, that will boost my work and many they will start reading it. So even if they do something bad to me, that is going to be for the glory of the Lord. Many, they will see how filthy this cult and many will leave it. So even in that, we have a benefit. The same as when they make videos to, to attack me. This is for our benefit. You see how Muslim they will learn about Christian Prince. Muslim, they watch Muslim videos. A Muslim, he go and he start blah, 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 Christian Prince. So this guy will be curious. Okay, this Christian Prince, who, who, what he's saying? Let us see what he's saying. And let us say, from every 1,000 Muslims, they watch my videos, only 5% they agree with me. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. I have tens of thousands of Muslims left Islam already. Nobody, no, nobody can count them. Not me. Only the Lord he can. Because we have many who left Islam life on air. There's many who left Islam talking to me in private. And there's many I never spoke to them because they, they watch my videos or read my books and they leave Islam. Just ask yourself, how many Muslims after uh, seeing this story here in this book, which is very Islamic books about Muhammad receiving dish of wisdom and dish of faith. How many Muslims they will laugh at this and they will leave Islam? Muslims are human like us. And many of them, they will not go in the stage of denial. They will say, this is stupid. This is cannot be from God. I mean, how in the world this guy, he can be a prophet. He's telling us the story alone is a proof that he is a fraud. God, he sent a dish of wisdom, <clears throat> a, dish, a dish of faith. I better watch Oprah, the stupid Oprah show, from watching Muhammad, because even the stupidity of Oprah, Muhammad, he did beat everyone, every stupid person in the world. And actually, if you read the rest of the story, you will die laughing. Look, Jibreel, he arrived at the door of heaven. Jibreel, he took Muhammad to the heaven. The angels, brother, when he arrived at the gate, they said to him, Who is this? <laughs> the angels asking Jibreel from behind the door, Who is this? Jibreel, he answered, I'm Jibreel. <laughs> Do you see the story? Look at this. Each time Jibreel arrived to a door of heaven, the security guard, they ask him, who is this? Read. Hmm? And then it says, after he put, the, he insert the wisdom in, in his throat and his in his blood vessels, and then he close it, close his chest, then he descend as, as, as candid with him to the heaven. And the word, uh, uh, and he knock at the door. Look at the door, what? The door of the heaven, brother. The deliverers of the heaven ask, Who is it? Like, what the heck? Go to Amazon, buy a security camera, you can see. Jibreel is unknown. They do, those are angels, by the way. They are guarding the door of the heaven, and they do not know who is it. He said, Jibreel, 
Okay, well, with Jibreel. How they, so if you say Jibreel, anyone say Jibreel, they open the door for him? So if I go there, I say Jibreel, they open the door for me? They said, who is accompanying you? Huh? They didn't know Muhammad, brother. He said, Muhammad. They said, has he been called? The security guards, they don't have any update from the White House. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid story like this? Okay. Have he been called? Those are in the gate. What their job? Okay. The guy, he said, yes. How you know that this is true? Maybe it's a cue against the president. Has he been called? He said, yes. He said, he is welcome. <laughs> and this is the case each time they arrive to the gate. There are seven gates. And then Ad, you know, Prophet, he saw Adam there. I thought Adam is dead. He is not in heaven. He saw Moses. He saw Adam. He saw everybody. I mean, when people, they see those stories, especially with the way I present it, because, you know, sometimes we read stories, but it doesn't sound funny. It doesn't sound stupid sometimes. Because not all of us, we have the ability, let us say, a gift of exploring the story, examining the story, especially when you do it in a comedy way. And this is why they hate me very much. Because... I expose the comedy of the stupidity of the storyteller. His name is Muhammad. And as usual, there is no witnesses. Muhammad, he went to seven heaven, a living heaven, blah, 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 blah. Who, who saw him? Nobody. And by the way, brother, yesterday I went fishing, brother. Okay, look what happened, brother. When I was fishing, I did fish a submarine. Yes, brother, a submarine. And inside the marine, brother, there is a lot, a lot of marine. And then the submarine, they told me, please release us. We are Japanese Marine. And I found later, brother, they are Japanese Marine from the time of the Second World War II. And they are still stuck in the grass of the ocean. I told them, okay, I will release you. If you get my broken Sony TV and you get me brand new Sony TV, brother. The Japanese, brother... They said to me, okay, we will have a deal. We are going to stuff you with Sony TV. Then, brother, they open my TV chest and they stuff my Sony TV with a lot of Sony product. Here we go. We have a story. Why you don't believe it? What the difference between my story and your Muhammad story? Stupidity is amazing. Is it? Stupidity can be amazing. This is what you believe in? And this is your, this is your prophet telling you what happened? <clears throat> and you know, like, if you read the story, I mean... I don't know. I mean, the, the, the details are really amazing. Look, Muhammad, he been taught by Allah, but Allah never spoke to him. But Allah told Muhammad, how we do not know how he told him. Maybe he sent me text. He sent him text in WhatsApp. What's up? What's up? You know, Allah, he told him, you have to pray 50 prayer. How many? 50 prayer, Abu Rabdar. 50. What? 50 prayer? Allah told Muhammad to pray 50 prayer? Yes, brother. Muhammad, he received order from Allah to pray 50 prayer. When Muhammad, he went out of the, uh, uh, the tree of Allah or beside the tree of Allah, he saw Musa, you know, Musa, he's a Jew. The Jews are very good in uh, in mathematics. They are smart people. 
So Musa, he said to Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad, Khabibi. Khabibi, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Benjamin Netanyahu, and I'm going to ask you some questions. What Allah told you? Uh, Muhammad said, Allah told me to pray 50 times. The Jewish guy, Musa, Moshe, he said, Khabibi, Khabibi, are you stupid, Khabibi? Khabibi, how you can pray 50 times, prayer, Khabibi? Habibi, how many times you go to the bathroom, Habibi? Uh, Muhammad, he starts shaking his head and the, and the lies start filling down. Yeah, he's right. I mean, how we can pray 50 prayer, man? 50 prayer? Like, what is that? 50 prayer, each one of them will take half hour to prepare for ablution, blah, blah, blah. Rah, 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 rah. 50 prayer? So Musa, he said to Muhammad, Habibi, Muhammad, Turn your back, Habibi. I will spank you on your bum and go back to Allah, Habibi, and ask him for a discount, Habibi. If Allah didn't give you a discount, Habibi, come to me. I'm a, I'm a Jew. I can give you a better discount and I can give you a good loan. Muhammad, he went back to Allah. And Allah, there's negotiation. You see, in this hadith here, it doesn't say how many times. But each time, Muhammad, he go to Allah. Allah make it... Uh, uh, 45, 40, 35, 30, blah, 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 blah. I mean, have you ever heard of a bazaar like this? A prophet having a bazaar with his God. How many times we should pray? And then because of the Jews, because of the Jews, you Muslims, you should appreciate the Jews. Because of the Jews, you are praying now 55 times only. Otherwise, you have to pray 50. And here, this question here, how stupid Allah is? Don't Allah in you that 50 is impossible? How come a Jew, his name is Moshe, is smarter than the uh, than Allah and his prophet? Because neither of them notice that this is stupid. You know what I mean? And look what Moses he say, what, what Muhammad he said, he said to him, Moses who asked, "What have you done?" Like what the heck is that? Moses is questioning Muhammad, waiting for him in the corner. He said, he has lightened our burden. He gave us for every good deed a tenfold reward. What tenfold reward? Is that a, is, is that a tenfold of rice? If you search for the different hadith, let us see if we can find the other one which gave more details so you can love more. Oh boy. <clears throat> read, read with me. This is another story. The Prophet is talking. The Messenger of Allah said, Allah Almighty and sublime, he enjoyed 50 prayer upon my nation, on my main nation. And I came back with that until I passed by Musa's. <laughs> and then who said, What has your Lord enjoyed upon your nation? I said, he enjoyed 50 prayer. So Muhammad is like the idiot in the village. He have no idea what he have done. 50 prayer, you idiot. On them, Musa said, go back to your Lord, the mighty and supreme, for your nation will not be able to do that. Oh, here we go. The Jew, he did the calculation. Are you stupid? You and your God are a bunch of idiots. You cannot do that. Do you see it? Muslim, do you see that? How do Allah knew that this is impossible? How come Muhammad the fool, he did not notice? Why a Jew is the one is correcting you, correcting your prophet, correcting your God, and fixing your prayer order? If we call Zakir Naik, he will explain it in his own way. Taradam, 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 taradam. Great Prince, I told you to call me. Just wait. I have just a question. I'm listening to you. I know exactly what you are going to say. 
You are going to ask about the Prophet penis. Uh, no, this is not about penis. I heard you. You are saying that the Prophet penis used to go soft. The truth, this is not true. He was soft only for a few years. And after that, he ate this, it called Al-Kufayt. And then he became boom, boom. Uh, uh, Zakir Naik, this is not my topic. You are quoting a different thing now. This is not what we are talking about. Trust me. I don't trust you. Because you are a Christian friend. Okay, don't trust me. But I have the question I am asking for is different from the question you are answering. Okay, I'm listening. Actually, I'm not listening. Because Allah, he forbid me from listening to you. Okay, don't listen to me. Open your mouth. I can open my mouth. Because the Prophet said, if I open my mouth, the zini who will dump inside and he will do poo-poo. He will do what? Poo-poo? And he will laugh at me. Okay. <clears throat> okay, close your mouth. Why Moses is the one who corrected your God and your prophet prayer. Don't align you that 50 prayer is impossible. Allah knew everything. But the problem is, it's the dude. And the dude are very good in mathematics. As an example, Einstein was a dude. Most of the scientists, they are dudes. And they are very good in mathematics. So Allah, he always used the dude to correct him. Allah, he used the Jews to correct him. Do you have any proof of that? I can prove it for you. Open Sunan al-Nisa'i, hadith number 449. Oh, thank you. Well, this is exactly the hadith I'm reading. How you know, man? I told you, I'm 60 and you know it. Uh, you mean you are a genius and you know it. Exactly. <clears throat> this is God? If this is God, what is his stupidity? Hmm? If this is God, what stupidity mean? <laughs> and Musa says he sent Muhammad, and Muhammad he go back to Allah, and Allah he enjoyed him with less number and less number and less number. So from fifty to five, I mean, do you see the mistake? It's only one zero from 50 prior to five all of this because of a jew <clears throat> i don't know how crazy people can be but obviously you must be crazy to believe in such a story god who give 50 prior and a jew who correct the god and his name is moshe khabibi moshe Khabibi Moshe, let me, let me thank you, Khabibi Moshe. You are the one who corrected Allah, Khabibi Moshe. <clears throat> anyway, I'm not going to hold you longer. I hope you guys, you have a good time here. Don't forget to download my videos and share them. And again, we are, uh, as a Christians, we are happy people. And one of the signs of happiness is to love everybody. And not to love them in a stupid way how you love muslims as an example you love them by praying for them showing them the truth as we are doing right now this is how you love them not by giving them hugs hugs don't save people christianity the love of christ is not about hugging somebody that is somehow some naive people they make it look like christianity is about saving souls this is how love is. If you care for somebody, you save him from a bad destination he's going to end in. That is love. Not somebody give me a hug. Love is feeding the poor, not somebody praying for the poor to have food. Christ, he presented to us many ways of love. Sacrifice is a love. Sharing the truth is love. Being truthful is love. Being honest is love. That is love. For God himself is love. And those who do not know what love is, they are not living yet. They are walking zombies. Love is not a word you express. Love is a practice. It is something you live. 
it's something you do it is something you enjoy because it's not enforced on you that is love love is a Christ who sacrificed himself to save us love is the disciple of Christ who all of them been killed and tortured and yet they refuse to, re to reject the Messiah love is our father churches fathers who sacrifice their life been fed to the tigers and lions by the Roman and yet they will never deny the Christ that is love my friend that is love so we are people of love follow the God of love for he is love and love is a practice is not a statement so let us say let us all practice what God he gave us so we love the Muslims by teaching them the truth we love the Muslims by sharing the truth with them even if the truth hurt but we are not trying to hurt them we are trying to save them this is the love of God and with the love of God I say to you thank you for being here I say to you I appreciate you all and I appreciate the Lord that he provide me with people like you I feel I'm very lucky the Lord himself when he start teaching he have a few disciples the Lord today he provide us with amazing opportunity that we as a Christian family we can share from around the world Right now, as we speak, there's people who live in all the way in Indonesia, in India. I have people here who come from Nepal. I mean, countries you never even think you can have to listen to you. So we are blessed, and the blessing of the Lord enter every house and every heart. He said, knock at my door, and I will open for you. So let us today knock at the door of the Lord and say, Lord, I want your help. I want your love. I want your truth. I want you to be with me in my Sunday, in my Monday, in my Tuesday, in every day in my life. So I will have the truth and you are the truth and the truth will set you free. The only thing can set you free is the truth. Nothing else. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I hope to see you soon again. Christ is Lord. And anything else is going to perish. Except his name and those who follow him. I mean to that. Thank you.